Welcome to the Plant-Based Podcast. Did you know that plants are truly amazing? Not only can you grow them and eat them, you can also wear them, drink them, nourish your skin with them, and so much more. Let Ellen and Michael inspire you to love plants as much as they do, as they chat with the movers and shakers in this wonderful plant-based world. So, let's dig in. Introducing Lava Light Hydro Grow Plus, the light blue one. Choosing Hydro Grow Plus is an absolute must to ensure you have complete control over your hydroponic or aquaponic system. Its composition encourages root distribution and strength and as a pH neutral, 100% natural, chemically inert media, it provides the perfect base for full control of the addition of feeds, nutrients and any introduced fertilizers. HydroGrow Plus is also great for soilless growing, helping encourage beneficial bacteria whilst reducing the associated issues of soil-borne diseases. Look out for it online and in your local gardening stores. And find out more at lava-light.co.uk. Hi everyone. Well, surprise. Yes, we have actually released a podcast episode on a Monday. <laughs> this is actually part two of yesterday's episode with the Director General of the Royal Horticultural Society, Claire Matteson. Uh, Claire took on the role um, over a year ago now. She has loads of experience and we got really like into talking about the future of the RHS, the importance of getting more people into gardening, just so much information. We decided that we would split the podcast into two. So if you download yesterday's podcast, that Sunday evening podcast, you can hear the first half of this. And right now is the second part. Hope you enjoy. You've mentioned that a few times, just the importance of access to gardening for everyone at all ages, um, you know, wherever you live, urban or rural, um, just having the joy of being able to garden. Um, and obviously over the past I suppose maybe five to 10 years maximum, there's been a huge um, kind of push for getting young people into gardening, children especially. You know, even you mentioned that you have those lovely memories from uh, when you were young, as as Michael does and I do as well, and I'm sure many of our lis- listeners do. Um, what about the gap, which is teenagers? Mm-hmm. So obviously the importance uh, of getting young people into gardening you know we we've mm. talked about a lot and you've touched on also um and then we talk about all the, you know an older generation who love gardening as well what about in the middle um well how can we reach that age group yeah it's a real challenge and and, and interestingly in the museum's world that i was in that's the challenging age as mm. well Um, So let's recognise it for what it is. You know, teenagers are busy doing all sorts of other things, you know. So there will be some that absolutely want to, you know, and it's making sure, you you know, and, uh, you know, people who, you know, they might call themselves the geeks or the this or the that, but making sure there's something for them. Mm -hmm. Um, It's it's also going in through other routes. So at Wisley at the moment, we've got this really lovely exhibition called What is a Weed? And it was actually curated by teenagers Oh, um, wonderful! And it's and and so it's it's really getting their thoughts and their perspective. And they worked with some horticulturalists and they worked with some artists. But it's very much their work, their words. And we, in our lifelong adventure, we call that the kind of inquiring years, and and sometimes quite challenging inquiring. And actually, if you read what they have to say, some of it is quite challenging. Some of it, you know, you read and you kind of think, well, I don't really agree with that. But nonetheless, it's their voice. So I think it's 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 a it's 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 allowing them to have their voice as well. Um, the other thing we've been doing is is thinking about careers and how do we horticultural careers is I think a challenge. We we haven't got it cracked. Um, until I had this job, I don't think I really used the word horticulture very often. Um, you know, I was in a science environment and we used the word science all the time, but we didn't use that word. Um, and I think we need to more. How do we get horticulture careers as careers at school? Mm. Um, you know, of Definitely. things that actually that that sounds like a really exciting job. And I think we've got to talk about the job, the benefits of the job, the opportunities. And, you know, and you people go into all different kinds of routes. 
Mm. And we've got to, it's a bit of a mantra of mine, we've got to what I would call put the green back into green skills. Green skills has come to mean skills in technology and technology-based, you know, kind of power, solar, and this and that. And if you look at some of the definitions, it doesn't include anything about how you grow things, mm. how yeah. you grow things in the right place, in the right way, you know, for, for, for different places, different environments, etc. cetera. Yeah. So yeah. I think there's a lot we can do better. Um, yeah. Oh, did, sorry, yeah. Michael, go on. Oh, no, you go. You go. Okay. I am. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I was um, in my careers uh, session when I was 15, so 30 years ago, I was in like a little broom cupboard and uh, I'll never forget, never really talking to my friends as a teenager about how much I love plants. Mm. And I, the same. career teacher had a, same for you, Michael, yeah, she had this big book open with a whole list of careers mm. in it. And she said, Ellen, what do you want to do? And I said, no idea. I haven't got a clue what I want to do. And she actually said to me, what do you like doing? Like, what do you love? And for the first time ever, I admitted I like plants. And I said, well, I like plants. And mm. I will never forget this moment. She looked down her list, like with her finger scrolling down the list, and she said, "Well, Ellen, you could be a teacher or a nurse." <laughs> and I, and at that, and even then, but I was like, bingo. "Oh, <laughs> uh, I thought I said oh, I like plants. I definitely oh, couldn't be a teacher or a nurse." But like that is key, isn't it? Because there are so many amazing careers in horticulture, and this oh, doesn't man. just have to be, um, you know, digging the dirt, so to speak. You know, it can be marketing, it can be technology, it can mm. be science, it can be art. It can be so many different things within the horticultural industry that, you know, getting careers, teachers, um, you know, in schools to understand that and that kind of um, education. Like, I can always remember, if you didn't get good grades, you got sent to horticultural college. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Like, you, you, if someone says to me, why do you... Why do you love plants so much, Ellen? My answer is because you can't eat, drink, or breathe without them. Well, that's actually fundamental to living, <laughs> to mm. our species surviving on this planet. So it, you know, it doesn't. There's a gap, isn't there, for sure, in people's understanding. Gap. There's a huge mm. gap. We've got we've got to do better, and we've got to bring kind of horticulture into that. Not not having it kind of sitting out there, as you say, on this sort of thing to the side. Mm. But actually, it is right at the heart, exactly as you say, in terms of understanding plants, working with plants, loving plants. And then doing lots of different things, you know, so many different industries that you can go into. Mm. Um, and and, and it, it's interesting that there are a lot of mid-career changes into horticulture. And I think it's because some people, they've gone into careers and then they kind of go, you know what? I kind of want to do something where perhaps yeah. I feel like I'm sort of getting back to. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's what they wanted to do in the first place. It could have been. Yeah. Discouraged. Yeah. Yeah. So. Absolutely. yeah. I do feel you're right about the word horticulture. It doesn't, it somehow doesn't feel like a positive word or one that people take seriously in a way. And I did, I wondered once, I don't know if you're in this conversation, Ellen, but um, we talked somewhere about uh, making it an ology, maybe horology. Uh, yeah. interest <laughs> which is it's awful that you have to rebrand it to get it noticed but it it is sometimes like that isn't it but you know with what i like to do i want to show people that there are so many different careers in the industry and and sometimes i do think when it comes to kids and teenagers it's in my experience it's not always been about simply grow some seeds it's fun it's about showing them a really cool different plant like the the tom tato like frankenstein plant you know um venus flytrap let's count to 10 see if it catches you know those different aspects as well and also the commercial side of stuff because i want to show you know robots conveyor belts you know you put a tiktok up of a conveyor belt in a plant nursery and people are like a gog they're like yeah it's It's like but this is the commercial world and that is gonna get people respecting horticulture but also considering range of careers in our in our hortology world you know Uh, yeah Yeah. in hortology like at the end of the day let's let's start let's start calling it hortology i think (laughs) Let's I completely agree about that text. So we're doing a big, mm. um, we've got a big partnership. It's very exciting with the Natural History Museum. Fancy that. Okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? Uh, with the Natural History Museum, um, actually the Royal Society are, are part of it as well, where mm. we're, we're, we're working, so it's funded by the Department for Education, and it will um, uh, basically get children across all ages, across all curriculums, um, to transform their school grounds, um, you know, what, in ways that they want to, but basically to inc- increase, you know, green space, 
gardening, etc. But what, but the, but the trick is what we what we're getting them to do is to map what there is there at the moment using technology. Mm. And so you've got the perfect kind of combination, you know. Oh, yeah. You've got a piece of tech that you go around and you measure things, but then also you do stuff and then you can go measure it again. So mm-hmm. it actually really sort of brings it into the modern world. It's not just, as you say, planting a seed yeah. and you can actually begin to, you know, you learn about the growing and the planting mm-hmm. and all of that, but yeah. then you can actually look at some of the bigger things, of, of changes. You can look at, you know, does that mean we have more butterflies on site? You can then up, yeah, up, totally. up, up, up. Put your 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 results up. You can pair it with schools across the country. You can design your own experiments. But I think it just shows, as you say, it's a hautology. It's not just about Definitely. you know, are you good at yeah. you know plopping a, a seed in a mm-hmm. in, yeah. in, in a container. It is, and that's, it's great to teach kids how to sow seeds, even teenagers. But you also need to show them the serious side of the business. Well, otherwise they will accidentally think it's a hobby. And of course it yeah. can be a hobby, but it can also be a very great career as well. Exactly. Now, like yeah. you mentioned commercially as well, like Michael, you always talk mm-hmm. about the commercial side of horticulture. Yeah, it yeah, brings yeah. we in, don't know that enough. No, all. like it brings in a, a, a lot of money into the economy, you know, mm. so it is a vital yeah, I think it's almost a £30 billion pound per annum economy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's huge. Industry. Which mm. is yeah, it's a, it, it's huge and it's got the potential to grow as well. Mm. So yeah, it, it's um, yeah, we, we're we're doing it down at the moment, and I'm yeah, I think all good ideas on a postcard as to how do we collectively. Well, I'm, I'm I'm halfway to a strap line here, but bear with me. It's almost in horticulture slash hortology. You don't have to get your hands dirty because you could be working in computers, PR, copywriting. So that is. That's almost a poster. Should we work on that one? <laughs> but yeah, so you don't have to get your hands dirty because it is so varied. And I think that is the point that we need to get across sometimes. So, yeah. Although anyway, it is fun getting what, your hands dirty though, isn't it? Uh, it's the, the best. It's the best. <laughs> uh, so I want to talk a little bit about inclusivity because you guys have done some great work on this over the last few years. Have you got any more plans in that direction? Well, I think it is, you know, for me, it, it I don't even know how to, how to put this. It's, mm. it, 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 it's just something, it's not a have to do. It's just, it's something we do. And we, you mm. know, it's, it's, it just makes, you know, a bringing horticulture to as many diverse groups as possible enriches everything. Yeah, totally. As you, as you were saying, you, you know, you learn so much from other people. Mm. And so, yeah, I mean, we, you know, we had a great, uh, we had our first um, sort of um, uh, inclusion and diversity garden at Chelsea this year. And we had our first uh, gay marriage on a Chelsea garden yeah. this year, which was... I watched that. <laughs> I stood for ages so I could see that. <laughs> so, you know, so so that was fabulous. We're working with more and more groups, both kind of nationally and locally. Mm. Um, you, you know, just we, we we do some wonderful things where, um, let's say, at Wisley in the in the World Food Garden, there um, working with uh, different communities from Woking, and they um, women as Asian women will come and we'll do cook-ins with them. Mm-hmm. Um, with and, and they will actually show how they and give us recipes of how they can use some of the ingredients and things that mm, we grow in the world perfect. garden to really you know and it's it's such a wonderful thing to do because yeah. it's such a strong community spirit. Mm-hmm. We're working with prisons as well. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, we find that you know in the prison community, uh, you know, that's it's often a really good way, particularly people who have. You know, they, they, they have very, very poor mental health and it can really help boost that confidence and that mental health. So it's really looking across a whole range of different um, different groups, different communities and, um, and and being where they are and, and bringing in, not just trying to tell them what to do. Yeah. But really, and back, back to that engagement point, as I say, that I was saying yeah. from early on, but really it's it's really trying to make sure that, that we're, we're learning together and we're sharing together knowledge and expertise, not just this idea that there's the, you know, there's this kind of one canon of knowledge and down it comes. Yeah. Just being open and involved. I feel that's yeah. what it's about, isn't it? Yeah. We've Absolutely. got a fun thing um, for the RHS garden this year, but I'm not allowed to tell you, of course, yet. So oh, you see. wait for that one, but it's going to be really good. <laughs> Watch this space. Watch um, this you've, space. 
Yeah, the other thing we're doing, actually, which is, once again, it's it's getting into a different community. Um, we've got our first ever urban show. Oh, yes. So this will be at the Mayfield uh, Depot in Manchester. So those people from Manchester will know that's actually a big kind of music venue for, you know, young people much, much younger than me. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, I actually was at a, uh, you asked me what is my typical day yesterday. I had the pleasure of spending an hour with our shows team and they were giving updates and, um, you know, a couple of our young, um, folk in our, our shows team, were giving an update on some of the content that's being developed for that. And it's just so exciting. So that's oh. going to be fabulous. So tickets are on sale now, but it's oh, going to be oh, very different. A little advert out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really cool. I saw that come up and thought that's re- that's actually that's progression. You know, it's a very cool thing mm-hmm. to see. Um, we mentioned technology a fair bit um, in, just over the last few minutes, and there's so much more technology out there. There's so much, many more kind of information outlets such as social media, for example, and, and much more. What do you feel about like the risk of inaccuracies when it comes to horticulture with information being put out there? How do you feel about that? Yeah, I do think it's an issue, actually, and I think there is... Um... I think a couple of things. One, I think just as um, kind of citizens in this, once again, in a, thank goodness, you know, the the sort of democracy, that that therefore we are responsible, if you like, for thinking about the data sources and the information Mm -hmm. and where it comes from and is it trustworthy and not just kind of soaking it all up and just thinking, well, I saw it and therefore it's true. So I do think there is something, you know, you know, we have to take that responsibility if we want to live in, you know, the, the kind of open democratic society that we do. So that's the kind of big, slightly grand point. So when it comes to horticulture, you know, it, it, it is the same. Now, I'm very proud to say that I would, you know, we, we it's a bit of a minefield, but the information, um, you know, on our website is you know, it, it is put there by experts, um, you know, it should be reliable and trustworthy. And if people then come to us with, with issues on it, we will look at it, and we will update it, and we will think about it, you know, very seriously, and very carefully. So yeah, we, I think you therefore have to think carefully about where do you get your information from. We've got an app out at the moment, the RHS Grow app. It's out in a beta testing at the moment. Okay. Where, um, so you can you can download it um, and you can create your own plant collections and you know you can get information and it takes you know draws the information from our websites and from our data sources. So you kind of and you, you kind of know. We also tested a number of the ID apps out there. So we found what we thought was the best one, and we've partnered with them and integrated that into the into the app because obviously all of these ID apps are a bit you know n- never perfect. But we we, yeah, we, yeah, we wanted to work with one which the, the one that we thought was was one of the best. So yeah, I think people do need to care and worry about mm. their data sources and where they're getting their information from because mm. you can get bad information, which sometimes just means something dies and that's just very annoying, or you can get bad information where it could actually lead to some quite serious problems. So, mm. Mm. yeah, important. Yeah. Uh, so next question, we won't ask what your favourite RHS garden is, although we, we think it's probably one that you can cycle to. But no, how important... I love them all for different reasons. <laughs> but how important do you think it is in their role in spreading the message? Because they have their own really great programmes of activities, flower shows, and indeed they've all got different personalities as well, haven't they? Oh, they really do. And that's why I love them all so much. And And, and when you you know, when you go around them, you you realise how different they are, actually. And they very much respond, I think, obviously, physically to the environment that they're in, but also culturally, actually, mm. see, to the environment that they're in. And you see that. So, yeah, I think the reason I think the RHS Gardens is so important, one, they show what, a, what this kind of the pinnacle of excellence of horticulture can look like. Now, we can't all get our gardens to look like that, sadly, um, because, you know, they you know, they are the real excess. But it, it can kind of give you that inspiration, those yeah. ideas, you know, and it, it really is extraordinary of, of, of what's achieved. And I take lots of ideas home with me and don't quite manage it quite as well. But, you know, but it's still not, you know, it's still great to be able to do that. And then the outreach that they all do. 
um, you know, I think we had 50,000 um, children actually physically visit uh, gardens last year. Um, and that's 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 just literally coming and doing a hands on workshop for, you know, a day or half a day. And so the changes that that would, you know, that would entail. We, we actually managed to get some funding where we can bring schools that don't normally come through whatever disadvantage, you know, so that they've got travel bursaries and things like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, the gardens are hugely important because doing seeing and doing the physical thing makes a big difference, I think. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So there's lots of things going on in horticulture at the moment. And I know uh, recently you met Michael. Uh, lucky you, you met Michael at the government <laughs> drinks reception. I hope he wasn't like slurring his words over champagne or anything. Uh, but you were there, obviously, to showcase horticulture. Um, do you think that made a positive impact? Do you do you have any like, thoughts on where that might go next? Mm. Yeah, it's so important. Um, one of our key strategies is um, champion in, in the new strategy. To, one of our strategic priorities is champion, champion the essential role of horticulture. And so events like that are really, really important to kind of talk to MPs about why it matters. Um, as you say, Michael, not just a hobby. It matters because it's actually mm. a big industry. You know, we need to kind of support and invest into that industry if it's to succeed, like other industries get, you know, are supported in and invested in. We need to get it, you know, into schools. We need to make sure that, you know, schools have the opportunity to for children to get involved because of all the, you know, the careers opportunities, but also the other benefits that it brings. So, yeah, we will do more of that. Um, you know, and once again, this isn't something that we ought to do alone as the RHS. This is where strength is in numbers. Uh, you know, so we'll work that was actually with organisations like the Horticultural Trade Association, um, you know, Bali and others. But we're also working with um, we're just setting up a group at the moment um, with the big um, uh, organisations that have national gardens like the, the National Trust, English Heritage, World Historic Palaces to also look at it through a different lens, you know, where the public is coming in of how do we make sure that we collectively have a strong voice when we want to talk about the important role of um, our national gardens. Um, Because I feel they don't really get the attention that perhaps some of the big museums get or or whatever. And, And actually, we are a nation of gardeners. And, yeah. and let's really, really be proud of that and make sure that goes all the way up, you know, through the, you know, through the, the sort of political circles, et cetera, yeah. to make sure that is shouted about as loudly from a tourist perspective, from a pride perspective of, of what we're good at in this country. So, yeah, so we, we're working through the industry, the public public facing organisations to to really make the case for horticulture. Mm-hmm. That's great. Actually, it's um, whenever you travel, um, you know, as someone who works in horticulture and you, are, you know, are chatting at conferences or events, mm-hmm. the UK gardening industry will always come up. It, it will always be discussed. Everyone knows the RHS. They will talk about the garden shows. They will talk about the gardens. They want mm. to know more about gardening. And we are a nation of gardeners. And that's so important to celebrate, isn't it? It really yeah. is. And, and I tell you, I think, you know, um, the the RHS Chelsea Flower Show uh, is 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 if you like that kind of pinnacle of mm. that. You, you know, yeah. It, yeah. It, it is Probably. such an extraordinary thing. You know, we get you know it gets such great coverage nationally, internationally. It's the kind of the hub. It sort of brings everybody together. Mm. You know, it's serious. It's fun. It's emotional. It's beautiful. <laughs> You know, and it is, it is, I mean, you couldn't really make it up because it's a bit mad having mm. so much going on on this like time. fairy tale, yeah. isn't it, in some ways? Yeah, yeah. it's really bonkers. Is. It's bonkers, <laughs> but it's brilliant. But it's <laughs> brilliant. Any exactly. other way. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I think that does so much for, you know, kind of seeing this country as this kind of, you know, nation yeah. of, you know, excellence, I would say, in horticulture. And so this. Has- uh, this nation are actually bonkers and brilliant. So exactly. Chelsea Flower Show is exactly the nation. <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it absolutely goes around the world. You know, it amazes yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All over the world. Yeah. yeah. I, but I wouldn't, I, I mean, you've travelled a lot as well, Claire, but I wouldn't 
be able to pick out another country that has the same range, breadth of flower shows, specialist growers. There's no other country no. that can be compared no. in this way. No. Not in the slightest. Yeah. So really we, you know, we, we need to, yeah, just like, you know, celebrating our big heritage yeah. institutions, we need to celebrate okay. our big horticultural heritage. Yeah. Hortology. Yeah. Hortology. Hortology, Hortology yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, we've come towards the end of the interview and there's a question that one of my favourite podcasts always asks their guests and it's a really, really good question and I'm going to test it out on you today, Claire. What's the one thing in horticulture that we're not talking about? Ooh, that we're Ooh. not talking about. Well, I think we actually have been talking about it throughout mm. this, which is the name horticulture, the word yeah. horticulture. The branding, yeah. The branding. Mm. Um, you know, yeah. I, I, I feel comfortable using the word now because I've been in the job for a year, but honestly, yeah. you know, if yeah. you did those word clouds of me over the years, it would be kind of nothing, 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 poof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so we're in a bit of a bubble, I'm afraid. Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah, we I think we're not talking enough about the branding, maybe, and and then we wring our hands. We, we, maybe we're talking about it but not coming up with the right solutions. Yeah, mm. good maybe answer. Talking about it too much enough. and not not coming up with the right solutions. Mm. Yeah, yeah, lots of talking, no action, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so um, on a less serious matter, as we get towards the end. Uh, of the episode we have to ask you this it's so predictable Claire but we're going to do it anyway what's the one plant you simply have to grow well you know what I've got on my list at the moment and it was actually following a uh, really lovely walk earlier this spring around Wisley with Matt Pottage mm -hmm. um, and trying to think about what I might do in mine you know what I'd really what I, what I want to grow now is I want to grow a handkerchief tree. Oh, yes. They're Wicked. beautiful. Beautiful. If you go to RHS Malvern, oh. uh, take a little walk around Malvern. There's a church on the park. It's not very big. And you walk through and it is full oh. of handkerchief trees. Oh. And at first, like, I walked through and I was kind of like, oh, why? It looked to me, because I didn't look up at that point. I was just walking along. <laughs> and it looked like somebody had, like, dropped a load of tissues. Literally, that's what it looked oh, like. So and I was, and I looked and I was like, oh, my gosh, there's a handkerchief tree. And I looked up and there it was. And it was absolutely oh, wow. glorious. They are beautiful. beautiful. Aren't they beautiful? And it's such so a big tree, isn't it? So though? beautiful, yeah. I think you yes. could get a similar effect from Cornus Venus, which okay. is a very big flowered cornice. Yeah. And that, obviously, you've got this lovely kind of almost wedding cake style. That is probably better for a smaller space, I would say. Yeah. But no, Beautiful. that's a good choice. <laughs> yeah. Davidia. But yep. just, uh, you've obviously got a really busy schedule, but I'm sure you get a bit of downtime in your garden at home. Tell us a little bit about your garden, because we know that you do like harvesting your own vegetables. <laughs> I do, yeah. I'm, I, I, I do. Uh, well, I'm. I moved out of London. Uh, well, almost twenty years ago mm -hmm. now, basically because I wanted a bigger garden. You know, so yeah. I spend far too long on trains. But I do love mm -hmm. living in Suffolk, and mm -hmm. that means I've got space. So uh, I have. Um, I've got three acres. I don't spend enough time in it, but I have a big field which um, I now mow through, and I have a few wildflower patches, which is just wonderful. And and mm -hmm. and more and more, I definitely see the the, the sort of biodiversity. I've got a number of kind of more formal beds that um, I'm working on, beginning to. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm, I'm going to leave the veg to last because I I can talk all day about veg, but I'm learning more and more and more whilst being in this job and getting more confident about what I could do, what I could grow, how to grow it, and really, really kind of taking on that right right plant, right purpose, right place kind of mantra yeah. of okay, planning a bit more rather than just turning up to a garden centre and buying stuff and then, you know, not quite knowing what to do with it and whether it's right. So I'm planning, actually, I've got a long Suffolk house and it's got a very old lavender, which is now, it's kind of just past it, sadly, 
Um, so I'm going to take that out and I'm planning at the moment a sort of more of a gravel bed that goes in there. So I'm building up ideas around plants and planting and that's my sort of winter come spring project. Mm-hmm. But saving the best to last, I have a really lovely veg patch and, <laughs> oh, my God, I, I, I spend far too much time in there. But we can, <laughs> that's where you can find me. This year, I, 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 for people that have kind of vaguely followed on Instagram and stuff, I, I, um, I experimented with lots of different types of squash and some heritage squash. Oh wow! Fabulous. Um, so I, I got these, these one, and it's called a Gallo Dessine. And they're these big kind of um, pinky salmon with these kind of peanut warty coloured warts i guess on them uh-huh. tastes delicious um looks spectacular uh and was actually relatively easy to grow and i was in bordeaux bordeaux just um a, a long weekend with some friends just recently and it turns out Dessine is just up the road and it was actually from there originally in the 1400s so that was oh, a nice wow. bit, a, a little thing to discover well, that's wonderful. That's the true joy of gardening. We can get serious and talk about hortology, but at the end of the day, nothing beats actually it's about your growing water your gourds, own. Isn't it? It's about yeah. your warty gourds, exactly that. Uh-oh. This time of year, you want nothing more than a warty gourd. Uh, thank you so much, Claire, for coming on to the podcast and um, talking through all of the things that the RHS are doing and for the future. It's been really interesting. Um, I know this will be a really popular um, episode. and. Um, we appreciate you coming on and spending time with us. Thank you. Oh, it's been great fun. Thank you very much. Introducing Lava Light Hydro Grow Plus, the light blue one. Choosing Hydro Grow Plus is an absolute must to ensure you have complete control over your hydroponic or aquaponic system. Its composition encourages root distribution and strength and as a pH neutral, 100% natural, chemically inert media, it provides the perfect base for full control of the addition of feeds, nutrients and any introduced fertilisers. HydroGrow Plus is also great for soilless growing, helping encourage beneficial bacteria whilst reducing the associated issues of soil-borne diseases. Look out for it online and in your local gardening stores. And find out more at lava-light.co.uk. The music for the Plant Based podcast is part of the song Grow by Mikey James. And our editor is Gareth Patch of Semi Echo. (laughs) 